Hello to all of you that are just arrived online. Nice to see you. Welcome to all of you that have uh, come in online. Nice to see you. Uh, our room's filling up, so we've got a nice energy here. Everybody getting ready. So we'll get started in a few minutes. All right. Hello and welcome to um, the 8th Annual Human Design Event here in Toronto. Nice to see you all. Uh, it's always nice to start one of these adventures. Uh, you never know where it's going to lead. Ten days is quite a journey. So uh, there's, there's a great deal in, in, that's available here in this event. I think it's, uh, it's something that's very exciting for all of us. There's an enormous amount of uh, really exciting stuff that's, that's going to be here. So I hope you're all going to enjoy it and uh, enjoy each other's company. All right, let's get down to uh, to today's story. I wanted to start with something that, um, yeah, we are living in perhaps um, some of the most extraordinary times that one can actually imagine. It's something that, that I've often shared with students of mine. Uh, one of the things that I love so much about human design is far beyond the, the, the obvious that we deal with in the basic mechanics, that is um, helping people with the possibility of being able to change their life and being able to discover who they are uh, as a being. Um, human design is deeply complex knowledge, is very profound, it covers many, many areas, and it looks at mechanics both at the microcosmic and macrocosmic level. I've been fascinated most of my adult life with is that, am I finally wrong? Is there, is there a God? Is that a bowling alley? Yes, something like that. That's a lovely sound, isn't it? The world is coming to an end. You can hear it. Um, most of my adult life, I, I've been fascinated by, by the flow of history, events, the way things move, and um, the way history has been laid out, and the way in which we've been taught history has been, well, it's been deeply unfair in a sense that we never really get to know what's really gone on or why. We get stories about, mythologies about, um, this and that person. We know very little about the lives. We know very little about why things change. We know very little about why uh, civilization rises and falls, while the world, why the world suddenly changes at any given moment. One of the most fascinating areas of the knowledge is global cycles. And global cycles is looking at the larger mechanical pattern. And it's a pattern that's very, very ancient. And it's not that human design is unique in its recognition of that pattern. It belongs to ancient Hindu Brahmin culture and it's deeply connected to the precession of the equinox. You know, in the early years when I described the nature of the synthesis of human design, I would remind people that it, it, it borrows in that sense both from Western and Eastern astrology. The Hindu Brahmin understanding of the larger cycles was deeply profound. And the pre precession of the equinox is something that we can see within the context of the mandala, the rave mandala. And because the rave mandala is such a deep synthesis and carries so much fundamental information, we're actually able to see the larger flow of the mechanics. And in seeing that flow of the mechanics, we're able to see the changing, literally the changing of the cycles. Um, we entered into what is the cycle that has defined our world for a very long time in 1615. And that cycle that we entered into is the cycle that's called the cross of planning. And everything about the nature of the cross of planning is that the cross of planning is rooted in the definition between the emotional system and the ego in the channel, the 4037, the channel of community. 
every cycle is built on a cross and they are built on crosses that are fundamentally right angle the way the precession operates and the cross that we have been living under in a sense since 1615 is called the cross of planning it involves the 16th gate and it involves the 9th gate and the 40 and the 37 so if you look here at this drawing here you can see that here is the 4037 cross and here you can see the 916 cross now this is called the cross of planning and everything about the cross of planning it, let me try to explain something to you because I think it's one of the most difficult things for people to grasp I, I, I entered into that dilemma when I tried to describe pentas or, or was you know transoric forms that we have no conscious access to it's very hard to understand something the only way I can compare it is to God if you'll pardon my sense of humor today on Good Friday there is this all-knowing all-sensing thing in the background that's influencing us it's influencing us the great mystery eh? the program works in mysterious ways there's this great mystery okay and this great mystery actually has physical themes physical themes and those physical themes have been penetrating our cells our genetic code for hundreds hundreds of years since 1615 your parents your grandparents your great-grandparents your great-great-grandparents going back and back and back and back they were all born under the cross of planning and the cross of planning has defined our world since 1615 our world has changed radically radically compared to any other epoch in our history and it began with the power of the 4037 because this is the channel of community this is the channel of the bargain this is the channel that says the 40th gate you work for us you work for us and the 37th gate says you work for us and I will give you the affection you need and in return we're going to have this rich bargain this rich bargain in which we work together to fulfill the demands of the community and I want you to understand how profound that is our history has never been about the community it was about you know Ramses or Alexander or Napoleon it was never about the community never if you knew something you were a black magician and you didn't tell anybody else because you would give up your power if you learnt something you didn't offer it to the community screw them you kept it for yourself for your own advantages but beginning in 1615 every single intellectual development in humanity was offered to the community because there was no choice and it wasn't like human beings suddenly changed over nice overnight and became nice and friendly you strip away the programming you've got a world full of killer monkeys you know this is what the not self world is it's a control mechanism we're living under an enormous control mechanism and it's going to go away think about what the 4037 brought us the first thing that it brought us was the true industrial age the building of factories the industrial age and the building of factories and the beginning of providing organized work for the community led to a number of demands what are you going to do with the children institutionalized education began the great programming of minds began the community began to be propagandized and formed by the institutionalization of education along with that came benefits that is what we would eventually call modern medicine the building of hospitals care facilities all of these things the establishment of true modern states true modern states that all went through revolutionary transformation during this time in which the people rose up and took power the American Revolution, the French Revolution, the revolutions all through Europe, all of these revolutions that transformed this ancient rulership from above in which the community was nothing but fodder 
to a world in which the community demanded everything is for us. We think that modern democracy is because we have become more enlightened and more aware. If you believe that, I have things to sell you at incredible prices. Because it has nothing to do with us. Human beings are so malleable. We are so deeply conditioned. Take the nodes of the moon. They're approximately three months in a gate. Those nodes of the moon will go into a gate and make a connection for somebody that gives them a definition that suddenly they think they've got this and that and the other thing and off they go and they're running and three months later it goes away and they drop like a stone. Well, we're about to have this on a global scale because we're used to all of this stuff. We are used to everything being for the community. We're used to institutionalized science. Can you imagine? I mean, if you go back to the very beginning of the cross of planning, you know, to the Newtons and whatever, you know, you go back and you have these individual flashes of genius that define the nature of what science was going to be. And you can pick their names out of the history books at the beginning of the cycle. And now, Nobel Prizes by committee. You know, 39 professors sharing the Nobel Prize for some obscure little whatever and finding some truth. We live in a totally different world. We live in a vast, institutionalized, deeply controlled world. And it's not because this is what we want. <laughs> it's not because this is what we've worked for. Think about all these philosophers that actually think we've done a great job. You know, I have a huge ego. And I'm not mad enough to think that I've done anything, you know? The madness of it. Because all of those philosophers are leading us down a trail that's going to be incredibly depressing. Because the fact of the matter is that the moment that this cycle changes, all of those things that we have taken for granted about our interrelationships with other human beings on this planet, wave goodbye. You think it is natural for us? that we are able to have a world in which we are all connected and everything works and we respect each other and all this stuff. Sounds nice, doesn't it? But you see, this is where we are at the end of the cross of planning. And if you look all around you, you will see that all of these institutions are beginning to fall apart. All of them governmental, non-governmental, charities, all of these things, school systems, governments, international aid agencies. Think about international aid. You know, one of the things that's so obvious to me about the nature of the world is how incredibly cruel it is. We have 40,000 babies die an hour that don't need to. You know, we live in a hellish place. It's a hellish place. See, there is an arrogance in those that have been able to avoid most of this, to try to turn away from what that is. Think about all those children in the world today that will not survive till tomorrow unless there is some foreign agency, some foreign service, some charity that's going to deliver their medicine, their food, their whatever it is. We spend billions and billions and billions and billions in delivering all of these services all over the world through these kinds of agencies. This is the cross of planning. This is what Marshall McLuhan taught here in Toronto when he said the world is a global village. We have to be concerned for our world community. We have that amongst all of those that, you know, want peace on earth and, you know, all the spiritual stuff. But you see, it's falling like a stone. And we have no control over that. None whatsoever. It's not like it can be saved. Look at the financial institutions. 
You know, this way of trying to control the energy of the world, organize the energy of the world for the benefit of the community. You know, when you look at the cross of planning, you see it's got the 16th gate, the gate of skills, the 9th gate, the gate of detail. All this profound digging into things, this incredible energy and skills to serve the community. This city, this morning when I got up, and I looked out at this city, there are millions and millions of people that are here. And this morning, they have to eat. You know, they have to make a living. They have to get from one place to the next. They have to be able to count on certain things being available. They have to count on the trust that's inherent in community in the way in which we create these bargains in our modern lives to be able to have these kinds of vast, vast communities function without everybody going crazy and killing each other. You think it's natural that you have a place like Shanghai that is 30 million human beings? You think that something is going to be able to maintain that when the background frequency changes? You see, because it's not in us to be community with the world. I'm sorry. I know it's a nice idea. But it's not what we're like. Because if you take away the background frequencies that insist that all of us deal with being in this community, this side or that, you know, those that hate globalization, those that love it, you know, the whole dynamic of it. See, we're so blind. We're so lost in the propaganda of this age that we don't see it. There's still people that think that we're going to get to Mars and that we're going to go there and things are going to get smaller and we're going to have these little jet ships and we're going to fly around and, you know, You think any kind of institution can run if there's no background frequency that says this is what you do? If the background frequency isn't there, human beings aren't going to do that. They're not. The 4037 says that everything is about loyalty. Loyalty. So much of what we deal with in this life is rooted in those bargains and the loyalty that arises out of it. That favorite place that you like to shop or eat or whatever, all of these things are all built into this formula. And it's a globalized formula that's been here for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. There's something to see here. You can see that there is another cross in this diagram. And when you're looking at this mandala, what you're looking at is the way in which the G center really forms the mechanism and the key of everything. It's what holds it all together. And the eight gates out of the G center in the way in which they divide the wheel precisely into its eight parts also provide us with mechanisms, locks and keys not only are we in the cross of planning, but there are other elements to our particular era. And the most important one for us here is this. It's what I call the return to Eden. You see, the lock system, the 13th gate represents the witness, represents the secrets, represents the keys. The 61st gate is the gate of inner truth. We are now in the first line themes of this retrograde process because the precession of the equinox moves backwards. We entered into the first line themes, the first line of the 37 and the 40 and so forth. We entered into those first line themes at the beginning of the 1960s. Until 2027, we are living in a time where knowledge, inner truth, is possible. And when 2027 comes, the door closes. We have had many dark ages. 
every cycle brings its own machinations. The cycle that we are in now is a great opportunity for us at the close of a very important time for us. This is our flowering as humans. Please understand that after 2027, humans will no longer have the potential to flower. Our time will be over. Not that we're all going to drop dead or anything. But the fertility of what it is to be human is going to be sacrificed to the fertility of the possibility of what it is to be rave. That is, we have a great mutation that's taking place that's rooted in our emotional system. This is the most important time in the history of our particular branch of the human family. In the approximate 200,000 years that this form has existed, from the 7th center to the 9th centered being in 1781, to this point now, this is the place to find the truth. And if you look around you in this world, if you Google, I hate saying that because I don't like these people. I don't. But if you, I like the service. If you Google, you cannot, in your lifetime, you cannot read all the truths that have been revealed in these years since the beginning of the 1960s. There is truth being revealed every millisecond, literally. This is the incredible momentum that is there, this speeding up that everyone sees. There's this unbelievable pressure on us to get it right now because we're not going to have the support in the future and we're not. Where we're going is to the cross of the sleeping phoenix and the cross of the sleeping phoenix is the darkness to the light of planning. And I don't mean that to sound heavy in that sense. I just mean it in the sense that we're dealing with absolute polarities. The cross of planning is fundamentally tribal. We have had hundreds of years of the development of the global community. The sleeping phoenix is fundamentally individual. Those children that are coming into the world those children that are going to be born post-2027 who are going to be like us, that they're going to live in a world that is going to be incredibly different from this one because the background frequency isn't saying make a bargain with your neighbor. The background frequency is saying forget about your neighbor, look after yourself. When the precession of the equinox leaves the 37-1, it enters into the 55-6 selfishness. The great global theme is going to begin with selfishness. That's a different world. Think about all the support mechanisms and all of the bargains that you need to live your life right now. You think about it. Your life is saturated with dependencies. And it's saturated with dependencies and all the inherent bargains that are built into our civilization that we take for granted. The electricity will work. The internet will run. The stores will be open. The food will be on the shelves. You know, all of this stuff that we take for granted that we think we're responsible for. Vanity. Vanity, 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 vanity. It's all it is. We're not in charge of anything. We're not in charge of our nature. <laughs> you know, we're not. You just look at anybody's design and you can see that. We're not in charge of anything. We're here in the movie. Our process is about awareness, it's about passenger consciousness, it's about separating ourselves from what the cycles do. And please understand, I'm not fear-mongering, I'm not worried for my children, my grandchildren, I'm not. Because they will have something that will allow them to navigate on any plane at any time. That's their strategy and authority. 
Strategy and authority is about the unique human process. It is not dependent on the tribe. It's not dependent on agreements. It's not dependent on bargains. It's not dependent on loyalty. It's not dependent on any of that. It isn't. And if you want to survive, you have to be able to have your own authority because there is going to be no authority you can turn to. Right now, that's the way everybody is trained. You got a problem? Dial 9-11. You know? There's some authority somewhere, someplace, that's going to be the key for you. There's somebody that you can call, you know? Well, we'll call them and have, them, have it fixed. Right. See, the cross of planning is such an incredible seduction for us because we're at the end of it and it all looks so well. Look at us. Look at what we've done. Yeah. Well, I see what we've done. I see that there's two billion of us who are hungry. You know? I see that there's hundreds of millions of beings that are in violent zones. I see that half of our species, womankind, is the most repressed and controlled. I mean, the things that are going on on this planet, it's not like, you know, because when you scratch the surface, you have nothing but ignorance and you have nothing but fear. And we are living in a world that is dominated by seven-centered philosophies that have nothing to do with what it is to be us. We are not here to be afraid. We are not here to struggle. But that means that we have to be able to stand on our own feet. That you cannot expect that the world is going to deliver for you. You know, this is what we expect now, that the world's going to deliver, our governments are going to deliver, you know, all of this stuff. But look at this world, with these horrendous religions, what they do to humankind, the control mechanisms that are at work on this planet, the ignorance that's here. And all of it is maintained at a certain level of civility only because of the background frequency. You know, that day will come when that background frequency goes away where it's going to be very hard to get a whole group of people together to do the same thing. You know, all of this modern life of ours has been determined by our integration into these communities, our participation as citizens, all of those things, our responsibilities to our nation states, to our religions, all of that. It's all built on the cross of planning. And it's kept everybody in a certain level of control. Homogenization, the not-self, this is the vast control mechanism at work. You are never going to be able to change it, defeat it. You can't do anything. You can't. You can't save the world. I know that. The world is intent on not being saved. It's not what the world is about. It isn't even what life is about. Everything that I understand about the nature of being is that everything is about mutation and change. The only thing that is constant is change. You know, those great stories of Inca civilizations that rose and overnight, boom, gone. See, what we're looking at is the, the crowning glory of our civilization a hundred years from today. It's gone gone. The world as we know it, gone. You take away the background frequency, you change the frequency, 
When you change the frequency to me, 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 I, 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 the us and the we are done. Toast. And that's a different world. And most human beings are ill-equipped for it. Because human beings have never been con taught how to be their own authority. Here's the great trap of the cross of planning. The cross of planning says, you don't have to worry. Get a theosaurus or get a dictionary or, you know, call your doctor or go online or you don't have to worry. You don't have to decide anything. You don't have to think. And they don't. Advertising tells them what to wear, what to smell, what to eat, where to go. What authority? Human beings don't have authority. It's the first thing you must give up to be human. The moment you come into the world, you have to deal with those authorities that are going to control you and determine what your nature is going to be. People aren't taught. They don't know how. How many times do I have people connect to me and say, I don't know what to do? And I say to them, me neither. <laughs> you know. They don't know. They don't understand. Look, there's nothing to do. I'm not telling you this so you do something. There isn't anything to do. This is the movie. It's the movie. You know, I'm like the guy at the opera that tries to explain to people what's going on because they don't understand. You know, he's about to kill her because she made love with him. You know, we're not about to get on stage and change the whole dynamic. No, 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 don't do that. This is movie watching. Because there isn't anything else to do. There isn't. You see, it's not about us saying, okay, we have to stop this huge thing rolling off the cliff. We're not going to do that. Hopefully we get a good seat. And you get to watch the movie. And you get to see where all this goes. Without fear. Without concern. Because you see, if you have your own authority... You got a ticket. I mean, that's the whole thing about this life and what's coming. You don't have your own authority or are you ever going to be in trouble? You know, what happens when you dial 911 and there's nobody there and nobody answers? What happens when you go to the hospital and the door is closed? What happens when there's no police in the street because they're stealing See, the cross of planning isn't just about some kind of, you know, funny concept up there. It isn't. It's in the whole fabric of our lives. See, there's all these people now trying desperately to hold on to the cross of planning. You can see this in all the fundamentalism in religions. And, and I'm not picking on Islam, eh? All the religions, eh? The fundamentalists, Jews, Christians, Buddhists. You know, I mean, you have fundamentalism everywhere. They're all, and, and they all want to go back. You know, like Bin Laden. You know, they want to go back 400 years. Let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning of the cross of planning, you know, where everything was sort of like, we're on, you know, everything's okay. And we're all together and we, you know, and we're all ignorant and we're all happy. Except for our women. No, there's a backlash. And we're beginning to feel it. You know, there's this enormous fear. I mean, you know, between you and me, don't tell anybody. But I mean, the world's basically broke. I mean, nobody's got that quite figured out yet. I mean, if, if, the, if countries were like people, we would have foreclosed on Greece and Iceland and 
I mean, we would have foreclosed. You know, we would have taken it over, repossessed the country, you know. I mean, we have real, you know, institutionalized problems that are incredibly profound. And there's all this haze over the top that says, oh, everything's, you know, we'll work it out. We have our committees and the committees of our committees and, and those other committees, and eventually we'll have an answer for you. And, of course, all the politicians are doing the same thing they've always done during the cross of planning. <laughs> they say they're working for us. <laughs> and you notice that? That's the classic 40, right? You know, oh, I'm working for you. I've always wanted to work for you. Where did I get the money? Uh, well, um, while I was working for you, I was rewarding myself, you know? <laughs> One of the things that was so obvious to me at the very beginning of my process is that I was given knowledge not to save fucked up people, which I'd been dealing with for a long time, but to make sure that children would survive in the future. Because that's really what it's all about. It's about understanding that we need to teach human beings, particularly our young ones, how to have their own authority to begin to learn from a very early age that they don't need to be dependent, that they don't need to seek outer authority in order to be able to find their way, in order to be able to understand what's necessary for them. Any human being following their strategy and authority is going to be able to navigate on this plane. And it doesn't matter what the plane looks like. Oh yeah, obviously it is going to impact us in one way or another, not particularly this room in that sense. I mean. We're talking about uh, an evolutionary process and we're talking about a social dynamic. Right up until 2027, you're going to have children that are being born under the cross of planning. Their lifetime, let's say approximately, you know, 80 to 100 years, it won't be until the last of those of us who have been born under this frequency are gone that there will really be the radical changes that will make the world then indistinguishable from this one. What we're here to witness is a number of things. We're here to be witnesses of the deterioration because it's what we're here to see. We're here to understand that this frequency is breaking down and that as it's breaking down, we have our true opportunity for truth, for truth. You know, for me, this is the Eden on the other side of the myth. And what I mean by that is that the myth was, was fundamentally, you know, the beginnings of, of the development of civilized human. That is, go out and seek knowledge. You know, go forth and multiply, go out and seek knowledge. We did a lot of multiplying. And we've sought our knowledge. And we're actually at a place where we have basically, you know, come to the point where we're not going to be able to multiply anymore. And we've come to that point where those truths that are essential to us are becoming available. The reality is that at every single level that you can look at in the sciences, what is being revealed on a day-to-day -day basis is really quite incredible. There is this enormous, enormous energy pushing us forward. My real concern about truth is that truth moving forward into the future cannot be carried on the Internet. I mean, for as long as the internet lasts, that's very nice. But we have to return to an understanding that if we're moving into an age of individuality, that we're returning to the age of the oral tradition. And it is one that is going to be very important. It is part of my teachings, one of the things that I'll talk about, um, particularly on Sunday, for example, in, in the rave psychology, psychology lecture that I'm doing about understanding the, the nature of rightness and, and recognizing that, you know, half of humanity has a right mind. And that means that there is this enormous potential for storing knowledge. It is this storing of knowledge in individuals that is going to be so important for us because it is literally humans that are going to be the resource. It's part of our process of coming to grips with what it means to go forward as an individual rather than going forward as a species. 
humanity is caught in the thrall. You're not going to get them out of it. You're not. It's like that crazy thing yesterday. I don't know if any of you saw it on my Facebook page. Television presenter in Lebanon. He does a TV show where he does, I guess, astrological prediction. You know, talks about what's coming up and gives people advice. He decides to go on a holy pilgrimage to Saudi Arabia. Right? One, of, one of their pilgrimages. When he gets there, they arrest him. They charge him with sorcery. They sentence him to death. He was supposed to be beheaded today. They've stayed the execution. And today they were supposed to cut off his head. Now that's what I do every day on Facebook. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a capital punishment crime, what I do in Saudi Arabia and in Bahrain and, and in places where sorcery now is a big problem. Um, you're not going to be able to influence such a world. I mean, I know, I've been at this for 23 years. You know, if you're not ready and it's not your fractal, it isn't going to touch you. It isn't. Because it isn't for everybody. Because most human beings can't get out from underneath that shroud, let alone their own personal conditioning, but on top of that, the conditioning that's there in the frequency of our time. And you see, they're the ones that are truly going to be at risk as we move forward. They will. Now, I can't... Uh, I never like to talk about raves. And I'm the guy that told everybody about them. We have a mutation that's taking place. The mutation actually started in 1781. The mutation is in the 49th gate and the 55th gate. They share, they are a, a codon called histidine. It is why we have had uh, vast increases in autism, prostate cancer. All of these have been related to this mutation that is taking place in the solar plexus system, something I've been talking about all my years of teaching. The human family is really um, an extraordinary one when you think about the evolution of, of any species. We have a very interesting history. There have been many, many variations in our family tree. As a matter of fact, they just found a fascinating one. They, they found um, a finger in a cave in Russia. And um, at first they thought it was human. You know, some old human member of our family, Neanderthal probably. And um, after doing a couple of years of DNA research, uh, they discovered that it's an entirely new species. And in that particular area of Russia, at, at one time, there were three kinds of us. There were Neanderthals, there were the what we were to become, the Homo sapiens, who were brand new then, and there were also these other creatures who were even older than the Neanderthals who were still there. And they made jewelry, which always says something really nice about a monkey, no? That's a joke. Anyway, <laughs> our family tree is complex, is what I'm trying to say. And uh, in 1781, the old seven-centered model disappeared. In this nine-centered model, what we are arrived. Now, by the way, um, we're temporary. I mean, I think it's one of the most interesting things about the way the program works, right? We're a transitional form, uh, it's what the ninth centered being is. And out of our transitional form comes what's new. And that's going to be those beings that are born with the transformed or mutated emotional system. Now, obviously in a lecture like this, there's no way that I'm going to be able to go and explain in detail all, all of what that means. Uh, there's a lot of material available at the website and so forth and so on. If, if you're interested in it. But fundamentally what it means, so you have a grasp of it, there's going to be children being born after 2027 that are going to be a horrible shock and trauma for their parents. The same shock and trauma that a parent of a severely autistic child feels. The sense of loss that you don't have the promise that you thought you were going to have. 
and the concerns and all of the things that come with it. I work with many, many, many mothers of autistic children. It is quite a thing to deal with. But the rave is going to be even more so in a sense. I mean, uh, I assume that the first ones coming in will be very, very quickly institutionalized because it simply will not be understood what they are. They will have a poor, poor vision, poor muscle tone. Um, they will probably never be efficient in terms of movement. Um, they probably won't develop um, any sophisticated level of speech in the way in which we understand it. And yet they will be part of something that we have no access to. We all live in and were born into pentas. Penta is a transoric form. It's the foundation of the way in which life is organized on the planet. A penta begins when three people come together. It maximizes at five. Three pentas together plus another being represents what's called a wall, which is the largest transoric form that really controls the way in which society operates. We live in pentas, but we are not aware of them. In my work, in working with Penta Knowledge, both in terms of its family practice application and its business application, it's only when you're taught these things that you can actually get to see it, because it's incredible. You get to see the way Penta works. I mean, if you if you look at a, at a family grouping and you look at them within a pentagraph and you do the analysis of the pentagraph, you see the whole family. I mean, and it's all controlled. And yet the moment that the members of the family are outside of that Penta, it's all different were controlled by these auric forms. The rave that's coming will be a conscious participant. In other words, they will be part of what is a conscious penta. Let me try to explain the difference. As human beings, we are here, as ninth-centered beings, to fulfill our unique potential. It's what I teach. It's my whole purpose for each human being to be able to realize the possibility of what it is truly to fulfill their potential as themselves. It is what our G-Center, in a sense, is all about. It is about holding us together in the illusion of separateness so that we can express our unique nature. It's what we're here for. It's what human design provides. A mechanical way, tools, for being able to get to that place of living out our uniqueness. And in that uniqueness, what we share, all of us, what we know so deeply in our hearts, is that we are alone. We are alone. We are alone inside of these shells, no matter what our relationships are and whatever their beauty may be or not. We are alone within these shells. And everything about being alone within this shell is that we are here to fulfill the potential that is there. When I teach love yourself, I'm not being philosophical. I'm teaching you the only thing that you can truly ever love. Everything else is just a movie. But yourself? This is all you have. This is what we are about. And this is what we are here to fulfill. But those beings that are going to be born raves, they will never, ever, ever be interested. It will never be the point for them to be unique. They're not interested in unique. They're not interested in their own identity. They're not interested in self. They will simply give. They will be living components of a trans auric form and the form itself will be the entity. If you take three of these babies and you put them together in a ward, you know, severely damaged children ward. You put these three babies together, within hours, nobody is going to be able to go near them. They have potentials that are rooted in what we study, for example, in both rave psychology and primary health system, understanding the, the higher tones of cognitive potential. The higher tones of cognitive potential, the fourth, fifth, and sixth tones, are going to be realized through these beings. They will have ways of relating to 
reality that is different from us because they're going to be operating out of an awareness system that is the emotional system and not the emotional system the way we understand it. Our emotional system, the nine-centered human emotional system, is dominated by waves. It is the motor function that is the whole thing. And it's the motor function that causes both the distortion and the possibilities. It is also the motor dysfunction that in essence gives us the nature of our world, a world that seems to be a roller coaster of pain and pleasure. And all of that is delivered from the emotional system. But those that are going to be born post-2027 that are going to carry this mutation in the solar plex center are not going to be carrying a wave frequency as we understand it. It's the next progression. We began with splenic awareness, we evolved as seven-centered beings with Ajna awareness, and now the fulfillment of the ninth-centered process is the fulfillment of the potential of emotional awareness. You see, our species is splitting up again. It's what we do, this family tree of ours. Very, very rapid evolution. If you look at the history of human evolution, We've gone through now, as far as we know, somewhere around 14 variations in four and a half million years. You know, the shark has been the same for 200 million years. The spider for 300 million. You know, the rat for half a billion. I mean, understand how different we are. This is this... <laughs> You know, we're just moving along and this evolutionary progression keeps branching. And in that branching system, we always end up with those different branches of the family existing at the same time for a certain amount of time. Now, in my process, I was told that all this is, come to, is going to come to an end anyway. It's about 1,300 years away, according to the voice. We're not going to disappear. That is, humans are not going to disappear. We are going to be less and less fertile. Slowly but surely, as we move into the next two or three hundred years, more and more of the right beings, the raves, are actually going to be coming into the world. But we're going to live together till the end. We will each have our way, and we will have no connection to each other. Cro-Magna and Neanderthal never had a relationship. There is no evidence in the genetics that they ever mated, that they ever connected to each other in any way. We are not going to have any connection to these creatures other than they came out of us. Because that's part of why we're here. It's part of what the nine-centered mechanism is about. I'm human. I'm a nine-centered human. Everything I understand about the rave is not something I like because it's not something that is connected to me. It's not connected to uniqueness. It's not connected to the magic of what it is to be in one of these enclosed forms. Not being a spiritual person myself, I don't rationalize that raves giving of themselves to a larger whole is a wonderful thing. Because as a human, I know that we're going to compete with that larger whole and it's going to be much more competent in dealing with the material plane than we will be. Pentas dominate the world. That's why we use it for business analysis. Nothing is more aggressive than a penta when it comes to material survival. You're going to have beings who are going to be deeply rich in an awareness potential that is all going to be given to a larger whole that is not human will not care about us, will not have any of our stories. My concern is humans moving forward, that we get to live out the fullness of the beauty of what it is to be us. Despite the nature of the world, despite everything that I have seen, every time I look at a chart, no matter whose chart it is, I understand the magic, absolute incredible magic, of what it is to be us, the possibility of what it is to be us, to truly be able to fulfill that uniqueness that allows us, allows us to walk this plane in the way we were intended, free of guile, 
free of fear, aware, eyes open, seeing life for what it is, and taking in the richness of that. This is an incredible plane to live on. You know, and all we have to do is understand you can't save everyone. You can't spend your life being worried about them because it isn't going to help. What you have to do is begin to understand the importance of selfishness for yourself because until you're correct, there is no one you can help. There isn't. You got to take care of your own business first. You got to take care of what it is to be here and to be free of the control mechanisms that distort our lives. And then be open to who's there. It is not a cross of planning commitment. You don't owe it to anyone. It's about things being correct. What I've learned along my way is when there are those that are ready, they show up. You don't have to look for them. They show up. When you're ready, they're there. When you love yourself, love is everywhere. You know, it's just basic, basic, basic things that are there for us. So this huge cycle, you know, I love it. This enormous wheel turning. It's not something to fear. Please understand that. But it also means that you have to let go of certain kinds of conditioned hope. Those fantasies, those dreams, all that nice stuff about what could be, might be, should be. It's all very sweet. Thank you very much. It's useless. It's useless. I'm a practical man. You take care of your business. You take care of yourself. You learn how to operate through your own authority so you can trust it. So that you're always safe that you're always correct, that you can handle whatever is there. That's what matters. It's where you get your power. It's where you get your strength. And only one person at a time, because that's what this knowledge is. One person at a time. You get it, you practice it, and you discover its truth. This is what we have to do so that we can do that for our children and our children's children that we can prepare those who need to be prepared, that we can be there for those that are ready and not with any kind of, you know, horror story. Just, excuse me, it's time to learn how to be your own authority because you can't trust the authorities around you anymore. So stop. All right. Nice to... Uh, start off the event with all of you and uh, thank you thank you and uh, to all of you online nice that you were here nice to see that you're a part of this and uh, we're going to continue in about uh, 15 minutes um, Randy Randy Richmond is going to be doing uh, question and answer um, those of you that are online by the way if if you want to stay online because um, the question and answers are free events um, you can just stay online, and um, Randy will start in, what's that? It's going to be about 17 minutes. Okay, so to all of you, I hope you have a great day, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep on going.